Hello everyone. Uh, today we will be discussing developmental milestones and it's a really important topic in pediatrics in general and also for the purposes of your exam. Okay, so in this video, I'll be discussing how you are going to assess a child who has been brought by his parents with concerns of developmental delay. Okay, how you are going to track history, how are you going to examine and how are you going to provide management in these cases. But uh, for that purpose, I need to, you know, tell you a bit of a background about uh, developmental milestone and what are the normal uh, developmental milestones and when they are considered delayed. Okay. So first of all, pediatric development is assessed in four domains. Okay. So we have four domains in which we assess the development. Number one is gross motor. Number second is spine motor uh, plus vision and then language and social development. Okay. So first of all, let's talk about the first domain, which is gross motor development. And uh, it's really very important, the gross motor development, because mainly people are concerned about uh, a lot about the gross motor development of a child. So gross motor means like big movements, like head support, sitting, uh, standing, walking, and running. Okay. So first of all, let's discuss about the normal uh, developmental milestones, and then we will uh, talk about when they are considered delayed. So in order to memorize the normal gross motor uh, milestone, we have something which is called as a rule of three, okay? So starting with head support, which is, which is achieved by the age of three months, okay? Uh, we multiply, you know, we, we go uh, forward in multiples of three, so, a head support starts at three months of age and the second multiple of three is six. So sitting with, with support is basically at six months of age, okay? And then uh, after two months, the baby is able to sit without support, but he starts sitting at six months of age. Uh, so three months and then six months and then nine months. So at nine months, the baby is able to crawl, okay? The third multiple of three is nine. So at nine months, the baby is able to crawl. And then at 12 months, the baby is able to stand, okay? And then at 15 months, the baby is able to uh, walk. And then basically at 18 months, the baby start running. So these are multiple of three. So head support uh, at three months, then sitting at six months, then crawling at nine, then standing at 12, then walking at 15 and running at 18, okay? All of them are multiple of three. Now, when these milestones are considered delayed, okay? So for, for that purpose, we have something called as the rule of five, okay? So head support is considered delayed when the child is not able to hold his head by the age of five months, okay? So as you can see here, normally head support starts at three months, but we don't level it as delayed up until the age of five months. So we have this two months window, okay? Because um, babies are different. So some of them will be able to hold their head at two and a half months, some of them will be able to hold their head at three months, some of them at three and a half months, four months. So we have this two months window for that, okay? So after the age of five months, we will label them as delayed, okay? So this is basically in multiple of five. So sitting is labeled as delayed by the age of 10 months. The child is not able to sit at the age of 10 months and he is considered delayed. And this is obviously for sitting without, uh, sitting with support. Sitting without support is achieved after 12 months. Uh, after two months. So uh, at 12 months, it is considered delayed then, okay? So we don't have any such criteria for crawling, but for standing, it is 15 months. So multiple of five, um, uh, 15, and then walking is considered delayed uh, at the age of 18 months and running at the age of 30 months, all right? So the first three years are multiple of five. So head support is considered delayed at the age of five months. Then sitting at the age of 10 months, it's considered delayed. Then standing is considered delayed at the age of 15 months. So if a child is not able to stand at the age of 15 months, then he is delayed, okay? The walking here, it's, it doesn't follow the rule of multiple of five. So walking is considered delayed by the age of uh, 18 months, okay? And running is considered delayed uh, by the age of 30 months, uh, basically two and a half year, okay? Then we have something called as fine motor development. And fine motor development are basically the, uh, you know, um, the skills, the skills that are achieved with, you know, hands, the fine motor development. 
And an important milestone here is something which is called as pincer grasp. So pincer grasp is basically this, you know, this sign. The child is able to hold something uh, between the tip of his index finger and the thumb. This is called as pincer grasp. And this mature pincer grasp, this is achieved by the age of 12 months, okay? And this is really important because when a child, you know, he, he, can, he can do this, then he can uh, start holding a cup, okay? He can you know, start holding a spoon and try to feed himself, okay? So, this pincer grasp is really important and you must remember that it is achieved by the age of 12 months, okay? And then, you know, when a child is able to pick something like this, he's able to pick pencils as well and he's able to draw, okay? So, at the age of two years, the child can only draw a straight line, okay? At the age of three years, he is able to draw a circle and at the age of four year, a square, and the age of five years, a triangle. So basically, remember this is a main standing under the roof. So the roof is basically the straight line, which is achieved by the age of two years. At the age of three years, he can draw a circle. At the age of four years, he can draw a square or a, um, basically a rectangle, a four-sided shape. It is achieved by the age of four years. At the age of five years, he can draw a triangle. Okay, uh, an important red flag here when the child is not able to hold, you know, um, hold anything like basically grasp anything with the palm of his hand by the age of six months. So normally when you offer something to a baby, they try to reach out, they extend their arm and they try to grasp, the, you know, grasp uh, stuff. But if they are not able to do that at the age of six months, then this is a red flag to watch out for. Then language milestones. Um, so language milestones are basically um, at six months, the baby is able to babble in monosyllables. So he will be, you know, saying like mama, mama, like repeatedly. Okay. He now he's not able to say mama and, but he is, you know, like kind of singing in monosyllable. At nine months, he start, uh, you know, he can say by syllables like mama and dada. Okay. At the age of one year, they can say words. The, the vocabulary is quite small, like they may be able to speak uh, three, four or five words, but, uh, you know, they are able to speak words. At the age of two years, they can join these words into simple sentences. So maybe a two word sentence like give me, uh, but at the age of two years, they can join the words into sentences. At the age of three years, uh, they can tell their name, they can tell their age and gender. Okay, so six months is monosyllable then bisyllable like mama at uh, uh at nine months then at one year words then at two years joining the words into sentences and three years they can they're able to tell their name age and gender okay um so an important uh thing an important red flag to remember here is a child is not able to say a single meaningful word by the age of 18 months okay so this 18 months is a really important time because if a child is not able to say a single meaningful word by the age of 18 months, his language is considered delayed. And if a child is not able to walk by the age of 18 months, then his gross motor development is, is considered delayed. So please remember this 18 months, you know, the 18 months um, time, okay? Uh, if a child is not able to form a sentence by the age of two and a half year, then he is considered delayed in language. So some there in social development we have some red flags. When a child is not able to smile at the age of eight weeks, then he's considered delayed. If he's not able uh, to give a proper eye contact by the age of three months, then he's considered delayed. Now, if a child is brought to you with concerns of delayed development, for example, delayed walking, which is basically a very really, you know common concerns. You know, parents try to compare their babies with other kids. Uh, so if their kid is a little bit slow in walking, then they become quite concerned because walking is a really important uh, milestone, especially for parents, okay? So if a child is brought with complaints of delay walking, how are you going to take history here? So first of all, you will uh, ask open-ended question as usual. Uh, you will say, can you please tell me a bit more about it? And then you will try to ascertain whether he was previously able to walk, okay? This is basically you want to know whether, um, you know, whether he is deteriorating because loss of previously achieved milestone is a very red, you know, important red flag because it can point out toward degenerative diseases. Okay. So was he able to walk previously? If he is not able to walk previously, then you will ask about standing. 
uh, was he able to stain okay if he was not able to stain even then you will ask about whether he was able to sit without support and then you will go backward like this this is basically for example this child is 12 months of age so his chronological age is 12 month and here what you are trying to do you are trying to find out his developmental age so if this child is only able to support his head then his developmental age is basically three months so he is delayed by like nine months okay so all right so if the child is able to you know uh, not able to walk then you will ask about standing if he's able to stand then it's you know well and good and you will move with your history if he's not able to stand then you will ask about sitting if he's not able to sit then you will ask about head support okay um so let's suppose he's able to stand then we will ask uh, does he try to take steps when he's standing with furniture for example or when you hold his hand does he try to take steps at all and any recent injury to his legs because it's possible that the child was trying to walk and he fell down and um, he got uh, injured a little bit and now he's so scared that he doesn't even you know want to try walking so any recent recent injury to his legs and any clicking sound when you change his diapers this question here is important because there can be congenital dislocation of hip joint, which is not, you know, uh, not easily recognizable by the parents, but can cause a walking delay. So in this condition, uh, whenever, you know, the, the, um, the parent change the baby's diaper and there are some clicking sounds because there is congenital dislocation of the hip joint. Okay, then you will ask about past medical history. Uh, past medical history, you will ask about any medical condition that a child may be diagnosed with, especially bone diseases, because the child was diagnosed with bone diseases, for example, osteogenesis imperfecta, then uh, obviously his walking will be delayed. Um, you will also ask if the, child, if the parent do, uh, noted any deformity in the child's leg, if one leg is shorter than the other, and any anatomical abnormality. You will ask about Head to toe questions, like the head to toe questions I told you about in the um, first video, uh, periodic history taking. But if you don't have time, then you can just ask, um, how is his health otherwise? Okay, so this one question will suffice. How is his health otherwise? And you will ask about the rest of the developmental questions. So in the history of presenting illness, because the child presented with complaint of cross motor developmental delay, which is delayed walking, but there are other domains of development, uh, deve development as well which are fine motor development, language development, and social development. So you will ask about fine motor development as well. Um, is he able to pick, you know, um, is he able to do pencil grasp? Is he able to hold a spoon? Is Can he scribble using a pencil? So these are fine motor developmental question. And with language, you will ask, is he able to, uh, you know, does he say any words at all? Do they have meaning? Is he, you know, when you talk to him, does he respond? Uh, does he give eye contact? Okay. So this is the question that you need to ask. Uh, then medications, allergies, and family history. Okay, medications and allergies uh, you will ask in family history is really important. So you will ask about any history of developmental delay in his uh, older siblings, if he has any, and in parents, okay? So uh, if the parents, if one of the parents was slow in walking, then it's more likely for the child to start walking slowly, okay? So that was all about your history. Then you will ask about ideas, concerns, and expectations. Um, all right. So after uh, medication, allergies, and family history, basically, you will ask about the rest of the pediatric history that I forgot to write here. Basically, the bird question, that is birth, immunization, um, the red book, and the diet. Okay. Diet here is also very important because malnourished child, uh, they, they, they have... You know, they have more chances of developmental delay as compared to, you know, the uh, well-nourished child. So this is uh, very important because, you know, if the child is not able to take uh, the appropriate, appropriate amount of calcium, then he may develop rickets and his bones are weak and he might not be able to walk uh, at the age of 12 months. Um, so you need to ask about the, uh, you need to ask the bird question here, and then you need to ask about ideas, concerns, and expectation. And after this, you will go towards examination. So examination, you will do GPE, which is general physical examination. You will also do neurological examination, and you will uh, find out the height and weight of the child and plot it on the growth chart. Management. So management will basically depend upon your history and examination finding. 
So if the child is, you know, if you think that the child is not developmentally delayed, so for example, he's, uh, you know, one year old and the parent is saying that he's concerned that the child is not walking at all. Okay. So you will explain to the uh, parent that, you know, he's doing normal for his age and usually um, the child does not start walking and up until to the up until the age of 15 months okay and we only label um, the walking as delayed if the child is not able to walk by the age of 18 months okay so you will explain it to the patient uh, you will educate the patient you will uh, the parent you will reassure him or her and um, you will do certain investigations which are basically routine blood test and creatine phosphokinase creatine phosphokinase they are just here yeah, we just do creatine phosphokinase to rule out something which is called a Duchenne muscular dystrophy and uh, this test we only do in male child because Duchenne muscular dystrophy is a muscular disease that affect uh, baby boys and uh, can cause developmental delay so you will do these investigations just to rule out you will advise the patient the parent to you know encourage the child to start walking so you'll tell them that um, encourage the child start uh, you know hold their hands and encourage them to walk uh, avoid using walkers um, and uh, what they can do is they can stand from a, at a distance from a child and hold their favorite toy or something and encourage them to walk towards them uh, or they can take them to a park where a lot of other children are running and playing. So it will motivate them. Okay. Don't isolate the child. Um, so this advice basically, and we'll tell the parent that we will follow up at one, follow up at one month. And uh, we might consider a referral after, you know, um, after some time. And uh, safety net, we will safety net the child about deterioration of a previously achieved milestone. So, um, deterioration of a previously achieved milestone is basically a very big red flag because again it can you know it can point out toward degenerative brain diseases so be aware of that and if there is a developmental delay that is, for example the child is 18 months of age and he's not walking yet then this is a developmental delay and we will order uh, investigation which are routine bloods and cpk and we'll refer the child to pediatrician so that was basically all about uh developmental milestones in similar way if you have a child who present with language developmental delay if the parent is concerned about language developmental delay then uh, you will take history in a similar way so you will ask the parent can you please tell me more, more about it if the child is able to speak any words at all or no words at all if the child is speaking words is he able to uh, do the word have meaning is he able to join uh, the words into a sentence? Okay. Um, and you will also assess hearing here. So we'll ask the uh, parent, does he, you know, uh, when you call him by his name, does he respond? Um, any concern about his hearing? And um, the rest of the social development, the fine motor development and the gross motor development history and the rest of the pediatric history. Okay. And in management, if the child is, if you think that the child is, uh, child has speech delay, then you will refer the child to pediatrician, okay, and the sp uh, speech and language therapist. Um, if you don't think that the child is developmentally delayed, then you will tell you will just uh, advise on simple tips. You will just tell the patient to uh, the parent to encourage the child, um, try to talk with the child, give some time to the child, and also turn on uh, television or radio for at least thirty minutes so child is able to listen to you know. Uh, someone talking and able to pick up some words so just the journal advice okay and then you will arrange a follow-up in one month or so and you will tell the parent that if still there is no improve improvement then we might consider referring to a specialist so there is all about periodic milestones it's a, a little bit of a difficult topic to memorize uh the different ages and the different milestones but uh it's basically an easy an easy station as well because you you already know the set milestones and when they are delayed and the management is you know pretty simple so i hope this was useful and i will see you soon with another video